Hello and welcome to your 78th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I want to talk to you about transaction log database backups and then show you how to perform a transaction log backup using SQL Server Management Studio as well as how to do the same thing using a T-SQL script. Um, a, little bit, a little bit about transaction log backup. So far in previous tutorials, I've showed you how to back up databases in simple recovery mode and restore only up until the last backup. But what if your database is in the full or bulk log recovery model? What if you want to restore to a point in time? Performing transaction log backups can assist in these scenarios. Since the transaction log contains a record of all the transactions that are performed against a specific database, you can use transaction log backups to restore to a specific point in time. You need to know a couple of important requirements. A full backup must be taken prior to performing any transaction log backups, and the database must be in full or bulk log recovery mode. Also, once the database is not in simple recovery mode, the transaction log will grow until a log backup is taken. Therefore, if you do not back up the log regularly, it can consume large amounts of storage that may cause you to run out of disk space. A transaction log backup empties out committed, checkpointed transactions in the transaction log, but it does not affect the actual log file size. Typically, transaction log backups are taken more frequently than any other backup. This is because they are usually small and require fewer resources. In rare instances, though, the transaction log may grow larger than the database data file. This may occur if you have a highly transactional database, like a banking system or something of that nature, in which most of the data in the database is changed. In this case, you will need to back up the transaction log more frequently. So, with that said, let's take a look at how we would do this in Management Studio. Okay, go ahead and connect to an instance of SQL Server. Um, once you're there, we are we're going to be uh, using my first database this time instead of AdventureWorks 2012. Um, this is the one I had you create one of the very first tutorials. I had you create my first database and then my database too. So if you don't have that created you can go back and look at those tutorials and I'll teach you how anyways so we are going to right click on my first database we are going to pass then we are going to back up and then we are going to go to the drop down over here and we're going to click on transaction log and then as we notice here in the backup set area this changes you know from as you can see, if we had differential, it automatically changes for us the name there. Cool. Uh, you could describe it if you want. We're going to leave this set to never expire at zero. Okay. And then we're going to go here and just remove the default, even though it's basically what we're going back to anyway. But just want to show you. We go here to add. And we're going to go right here and then we can see all the previous backups we've done a full backup of AdventureWorks 2012 a differential backup of Ad, uh, AdventureWorks 2012 we didn't do these in any tutorials but I have done them previously a full backup of my first database a differential backup of my first database and now we are going to do my first database Keylog backups.prn. So let's do that now. Okay, good to go. My first database, Keylog backups.prn. All right, and then we're going to click OK. We're going to click OK again. Now we're going to go over here to options like we did a couple tutorials ago and you're gonna see now down here this is enabled when before remember that it was grayed out so you want to make sure that under the truncate log the truncate the transaction log is selected there okay 
Right, I just wanted to mention that if you remember a couple tutorials back, back when I showed you how to create a full backup, um, I rem remember I had you select overwrite all existing backup sets, but for this we want a append to the existing backup set. So we're good to go here. We just click OK and we're all done. Alright, so the backup of database, my first database, completed successfully. You now know how to perform a transaction log backup using SQL Server Management Studio. Now let's take a look at what the T-SQL script would look like in order to be able to do this using T-SQL. Okay, if we wanted to perform the exact same action with a T-SQL script, we would just go over and grab this guy here. This is what we, this was on display at the beginning of the tutorial. And you would just copy that and then go back over and paste it into your new query editor and hit execute and you'd be good to go. And there's something, a trend that you might have kind of noticed with backups using uh, T-SQL. The main difference between this statement here and a full backup is that instead of using database after a backup for the keyword, we're using log. Notice that right here. I can show you. I have backup database, backup database, and we have the full and differential backup log. So there we go. Um, as always, I've been forgetting to mention this, but it is, I try to list it in the first comment of each tutorial. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please email me. And also, if anyone would ever want a copy of any of the scripts used instead, of having to pause the tutorial and then type it all out, just email me and I'll email you all the scripts that I have saved from all these tutorials. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Be sure to drop by and check out my next tutorial where I'm going to cover restoring databases. Thanks for watching. Bye.